So I'd like to say hello to all of you under difficult circumstances at the moment. We are under circumstances where cities are locked down, where the police and army in the cities where walking can get you arrested or shot at or um, and the implications of this state of disaster are particularly important to reflect on because while we are under a state of disaster um, for many residents of the city perhaps yourself and your families um, police persecution or private security are not abnormal features of life in the city but are constant features uh, for many women in the city the inability to walk safely without harassment is a constant daily experience in the city and sometimes under exceptional circumstances sometimes the state of disaster raises to the surface features which are always in our society although not apparent to all in the 1967 slogan that the right to the city is like a cry and a demand by the French Marxist philosopher Henri Lefebvre seems as relevant as ever now. Henri Lefebvre was an interesting character. Born in 1901 at the turn of the century, he had lived through two world wars. In the 1930s he had hung out with Surrealist poets. He had fought in the French resistance against Nazism in, um, during the Second World War and in the 1950s he had uh, been a cab driver in Paris. Now Paris, where Lefebvre spent much of his life, is an important location in this discussion. Um, as you will recall from the first teaching block in the unit on Walter Benjamin, um, Paris in the 19th century was one of the first spaces where large-scale urban regeneration um, was implemented by Hausmann under the Napoleonic era in the 1850s and 1860s. Um, Hausmann, as Benjamin documents, introduced the kind of beautification of Paris through large boulevards, through the arcades, creating the image of Paris as the city of lights. The romantic vision of the contemporary city, the city of consumerism, of phantasmagoria, the city of the flaneur wandering around, um, observing what was happening. But Benjamin also points to something much more sinister in this vision, which is that uh, this project took place under a state of emergency, that Hausmann was very contemptuous of the poor, that these interventions displaced the poor, that the large, these large beautiful Parisian boulevards were also created for the army to prevent civil war and uprising. And so the project of urban beautification, of sanitization, has violence and displacement beneath it. And this has never really gone away if we look at, which will come to urban regeneration, contemporary Johannesburg. Um, so Lefebvre's vision of, of Marxism also becomes very influential in the protests of May 1968 in Paris, but which spread throughout uh, France and throughout the, the world. Um, what started as student uprisings and were joined by hundreds of thousands of workers became mass protests against um, capitalism, against Western imperialism, against the war in Vietnam. And these were very brutally repressed by police. And the work of Lefebvre became an important influence. His vision of Marxism 
which was an image classic in some sense is that it was grounded on ideas of revolution in which the working classes were the primary agent of revolution. But Lefebvre was also very critical towards Stalinism and Soviet-style communism that focused on the state. Lefebvre really emphasized the importance of appropriation, of participation of workers um, in shaping social relationships, in shaping the city. And he also saw space itself as social. Space was not just a neutral box in which social, political, or economic relationships were placed. Space itself was part of those relationships. It bore, bore its traces, and he would develop the idea later of the production of space, the way in which space itself is produced through economic processes. But in his formulation of the right to the city, what is clear is again um, that the right to the city is the right to be happy within the city, but also to shape the city, to appropriate the city, to inhabit it, um, to participate in it. And this was very important and remains very important in conceptualizing the right to the city. But we have to ask certain questions. Lefebvre's formulation, which viewed the working class as the agent of change. Um, he makes no mention, for instance, of racial struggles, of gender struggles. And these, as we know now, are very critical to understand, to understand the intersectional dimensions of political struggle and claims to the city. He was also writing within a specific European philosophical tradition. He was writing from European cities and what we will come to question in this course is how much can this concept be adapted? How much does it have to be changed in order to make sense of South African cities, to make sense of large levels of informalization, of informal trade, of informal settlements? How do we understand the role of uh, gendered struggles, the, the rights of women to the city, of, of um, queer groups to the city, the, the claims of migrants or undocumented migrants who aren't citizens. And, and these are all things, elements which are very critical to understanding our condition today and which we'll come to in, in the units to come. The most prominent contemporary exponent of the theory of uh, Henri Lefebvre of the right to the city is the Marxist geographer David Harvey. Um, in your reader you have one of his readings, The Right to the City, from New Left Review. Harvey has a particularly powerful formulation of the notion of the right to the city. Harvey's formulation of the right to the city is that it is far more than an individual liberty to access urban resources. It is a right to change ourselves by changing the city. It is, moreover, a common rather than an individual right, since transformation inevitably depends upon the exercise of collective power to reshape processes of urbanization. So Harvey again develops the concept, but he really emphasizes Lefebvre's notion of the collective, of the participatory dimension in reshaping the city. He writes elsewhere in his book, Rebel Cities, to claim the right to the city is to claim some type of shaping power over the processes of urbanization, over the ways in which our cities are made and remade, and to do so in a fundamental and radical way. So for Harvey, the right to the city is not an abstract right. It's not merely a legal or constitutional right. It's the right to engage in the material form of the city. In like Lefebvre, Harvey is writing in a Marxist tradition. He views the main role of uh, the agent of reshaping the city in the right to the city as the working class. Although he acknowledges that class dynamics are embedded in an array of, of life worlds and need to be situated within a local context. A key development Harvey makes um, on Lefebvre, but also on Marx, is his notion of accumulation by dispossession. For Marx, the formation of 
of capitalism requires the displacement, the appropriation of common land, the privatization of, of common ownership of feudal regimes that went prior to capitalism. For Harvey, the, the process of dispossession um, is a constant process um, and has never gone away. That capitalism operates continually through dispossessing um, commonly owned land, commonly owned spaces, collective spaces. And this is necessary, he argues, um, for capitalism to reproduce itself, for it to continually expand. Harvey, like Benjamin, goes back to Hausmann's Paris um, and he argues again specifically that the um, projects of Hausmann, which in, of the renewal of Paris, which involved also mass displacements, were also a, a project of redistributing in Marx's term, surplus capital, excess capital, profit, which requires expansion. He writes, surplus absorption through urban transformation entails bouts of urban restructuring through creative destruction. Nearly, this nearly always has a class dimension, since, since it is the poor, the underprivileged, and those marginalized from political power that suffer first and foremost from this process. And Harvey relates this to urban changes and evictions taking place throughout the globe, in Mumbai, in Sao Paulo, in Johannesburg too, and this in next week's unit we'll deal with in depth. He, and he argues that the process of displacement of accumulation by dispossession lies at the core of urbanization and the capitalism. Now we will explore in next week's unit, um, particularly how this dynamic plays itself in the context of Johannesburg, in the context of South Africa, in which in spite of a very strong post-apartheid constitution and protection against evictions and dispossessions, these still continue and have continued. And this is a global process. But again, and I think this is something Harvey isn't attentive enough to, these processes of dispossession always have very localized histories. They have colonial and post-colonial histories and are very embedded not just in class dispossessions, but also in racialized dispossessions. For as we know from the South African context, it's primarily black populations that have been displaced. And this again is a global phenomenon. And so the racialized dimension of dispossession and also the intersectional dimension of movements against dispossession are very important. Um, in particular, and the Bieber John reading is very important for this, uh, the literature on the right to the city has largely neglected the dimension of gender and uh, this is what we'll move on to next. Now, the gendered dynamics of the right to the city are what Yasmina Bibijon, in her article in your reading pack, draws attention to. Bibijon writes, the right to the city offers a series of perspectives regarding the redemptive potential of the urban experience. Nonetheless, contemporary urban theory that draws upon Lefebvre's work really develops a feminist or gendered understanding of space. And this is very important because as much as Lefebvre or Harvey speak about claiming the right to the city as a um, political act or a redemptive act, uh, this in a concrete way is a very gendered experience. Um, as you know, the experience of walking down the street in Johannesburg is not the same um, for a man as it is for a woman. The experience of safety is n not the same. Um, and while the rights that Harvey points to, um, rights to transportation, to housing, to healthcare, to public spaces, are very important collective rights and have a class dimension, of course they have a very powerful gender dimension too. Um, and when we speak of the gender dimension, Bibi John is also referring to queer rights to the city. 
As she writes, fear of violence is a particular concern to women, minorities, and LGBTQ communities. The contributions of LGBTQ communities are often marginalized, and there is a limited public recognition of queer spaces. Again, in a very concrete way, the um, potential to express love, to express intimacy, to walk down the street holding that one's partner's hand is not the same, depending on sexual orientation and the way one walks, how one walks, who one walks with, can expose one to violence. And so Bibi John draws specifically on a kind of feminist tradition of critique and writes, a feminist critique of the right to the city demonstrates that though great gains have been made in gender equality, sexual discrimination persists within everyday life. Moving towards a great analysis of the multitude of gendered spatial tactics provides opportunities to practically engage with the struggle for rights through an analysis of varying spatial tactics. One is writing from a particular perspective, that of the United Kingdom. Um, and one needs to take this into account. Of course there's precarity, there's migration, there's inequality in the UK, but perhaps not to the same extent um, as Johannesburg and other post-colonial cities. But many of the things she raises are very important for Johannesburg today. The safety of women to walk in the street, access to public toilets. Um, and that public planning in the city largely excludes women and there needs to be more participatory inclusion in city planning by um, women and by queer groups. And so to draw the discussion back to the critique of Lefebvre, Harvey, but also of Benjamin, uh, Bibi John writes, the city is gendered through multiple actions and experiences of its inhabitants. Struggles over space reveal the implicit hierarchies, the ordering of space, the rules and the exclusions in order to maintain particular visions of the orderly city. The city is not necessarily a site where gender, race or sex bodies can enjoy the anonymity of the flaneur, but can also be the focus of unwanted attention. Just to draw back briefly to the present situation of uh, the lockdown and COVID-19, of course there are um, important public health reasons for enforcing lockdown, for limiting social distance. But again, this is a state of emergency. The implications of the lockdown are not equally distributed. Um, I've been doing research for almost a decade now on unlawful occupations in the inner city, um, in which tens of thousands of both South Africans and foreign nationals live under very precarious conditions. They rely off informal work. Uh, many disabled uh, rely off begging, mothers with children too. And so something like the lockdown hits them much more um, extremely than it does middle class South Africans. And also as we know within the student body, among yourselves, there will be uh, class differentiations. Some have access to, to internet, broadband. Others um, won't be watching this, but will be reading this because of data concerns. And so the right to the city, the contemporary city, is also about data. It's also about access to information. It's also about access to, to resources. And so for your diary assignment this term, we're asking you to reflect on the question, what has been the impact, both personal and collective, on COVID-19 on the right to the city? You can draw on your personal experiences, if you're comfortable to share, on your readings of the media, of your observations, and we ask you to relate this to at least one reading. The full details are in the revised reader, and please ask your tutors or me questions at the appropriate times. Mostly, please be safe and take care.